I was at the gym and I got a call from my indie game publisher. They were tired of the delays, the tweaks, the constant changes. They wanted to launch my indie game Never Song in just six months. Honestly, I was panicked because I knew the game was nowhere near complete and somehow I didn't even realize I was two years into development with hundreds of thousands of dollars spent building this game. Where did all the time go? Why did a tiny little platformer take so long to complete? And was I about to get sued and lose my dream of making indie games as a career? In my experience, games take about twice as long as you think they're gonna take to make. So if you're thinking of making your game in, I don't know, a year, it's gonna take two years. But why is that? Video games are the pinnacle of human expression. In fact, I like to call game development playing God. You're creating a new dimension. And my prediction is game development will soon be rebranded as, I don't know, world birthing or something like that. Seriously, give it 20 years and the developers who create worlds will essentially be classified as gods, with players living and serving their creators in their virtual realities. This little Big Bang is a cocktail of every art form and craft <laughs> mixed into a singular product. Story, 2D art, 3D art, music, sound effects, architecture, coding, player psychology, game design, voice acting, sound design, lighting. So that's why it takes so long. But the real question is, why is it so hard to predict how long this takes? It all comes down to the lack of understanding each ingredient and how they react with each other. And before we talk about this crucial sequence of ingredients to building your first game, I did wanna let you know that my massive program, Full-Time Game Dev, is 50% off for Black Friday. You're also gonna get my 2D and 3D art programs totally free. There's only 100 seats available, and these are certainly gonna sell out. The program not only shows you how to build your indie game from scratch, like I've done, but also how to secure enough money to go full-time before you even finish it. My 3,500 students worldwide absolutely love the program. Just take it from my student, Chris, who is now a full-time game developer. He raised over $150,000 for his indie game using my methods. Join thousands of other students worldwide on this private Discord server and begin your indie game journey. So yeah, let's talk about this massive cocktail of ingredients that make up a game. For example, here's the industry standard sequence for building a house built in about, let's say a year for simplicity. You prepare the construction site, you pour the foundation, you do the plumbing, the electrical, insulation, drywall, interior fixtures, exterior finishes, interior trim, driveway, flooring, you move on to countertops and exterior grading, and then you finish off with bathroom fixtures and exterior landscaping. And then, don't forget, you have to sell it. Now how long would this house take if we decided to build it in reverse? Well, I'm thinking, a decade, maybe? Not only is this house gonna take 10 times as long to build, but it's gonna make 10 times less in profit because it sucks. And the same is true with a game. The order in which you create a game is everything. Okay, so you're probably depressed by now. Don't be. The solution to this problem is actually pretty simple. Basically, all you need to do is listen to developers who've already done it like me, and also other YouTube channels focused on game development like Jonas Tyroller, Game Dev Unlocked, and David RB. So here's the sequence to building a game properly. Get your paper and pen out and write this down. It's gonna save you thousands of dollars and hours. First, start with your budget. And I know what you're thinking, Thomas, I don't have a budget. Sure you do. Let's give you a pretend hourly rate of $50 per hour. And estimate how much time you can emotionally handle dedicating to this project. Let's assume five hours a week part-time for six months. That's 100 hours at 50 bucks, that's $5,000, AKA a really tiny game. It's like a little condo in Kansas if we're sticking to the building analogy. So what does this mean? It means you need to compare your little game to little indie games that have a similar budget or schedule. We then use this comparison to map out our GDD, and that's a game design document. This is basically your blueprint or outline for your game. Here's a great example of a GDD. It's linked in the description. Then we build the game. Well, kinda. We build out a prototype, a demo, the first level maybe. With minimal graphics, minimal being the key word here, minimal sound, minimal everything. We wanna know that this game idea even works. And a good rule of thumb is if your game isn't fun at its most abstract form, it's not gonna be good at all. Just ask Bob Ross, look, he always starts with abstract colors first and then he tightens the screws. Ah, there's another metaphor, Ikea furniture. 
You start loose and then you tighten the screws later when you're sure you've built something that actually works. Okay, now we have this generic prototype that kind of looks like crap, but it works. And my method is to polish this prototype visually, musically, ambiently, and toss in story elements, but only for the prototype. You don't build out the entire game now. Rather, you create exactly what this game will be as a finished product, but only that first level or the first 15 minutes of gameplay. This is where me and some other developers might differ. Some developers may want to build out every mechanic, every level in a rudimentary form first. The problem with this approach is it actually removes a huge possibility from the developer, finding funding for the project. The reason I recommend polishing the heck out of your demo is so you can seek funding from a publisher or crowdfunding or investors. Now it's super hard to do this with a crappy looking demo. Once you secure funding, or maybe you decide to not receive funding, you use this demo as the standard for your game. This is the template. In a way, your new mechanics and levels are sequels to your first level. And we all know sequels are quicker to make. Just ask Satan's very own offspring, Disney. What am I supposed to say, Jesus? Now, obviously there's a ton of granular steps nested inside this sequence, but hopefully this gives you a generic roadmap to success. Honestly, I don't want you to make the mistakes that I made for Never Song. Speaking of which, did I ever get sued? Nope. I took the phone call from my publisher well, and out of necessity, I took the current build of Never Song and essentially used the exact method I described and scaled the game. I used the first couple levels of the game as a template and quickly fleshed out several more levels and finished it in six months. It's interesting how a publisher breathing down your neck actually helps you make better decisions. We eventually sold the game to Apple, released it on other platforms, and made more than $500,000 in revenue. And by the way, I can't disclose the exact numbers, sorry. If you found this video helpful, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and download the free resources in the description. And don't forget guys, my massive program, Full-Time Game Dev, is 50% off right now for Black Friday. You also get my 2D and 3D art programs totally free, but only for this short sale event. My 3,500 students really do love the program. Take it from my student, Chris, who is now a full-time game developer, raising over $150,000 on Kickstarter using my methods. Join thousands of other developers on the Discord server, and we'll see you there. Cheers.